The Life and Sad Ending of Sly Stone Sly Stone was born Sylvester Stewart on March 15, 1943, in Denton, Texas. The Stewart family was a deeply religious, middle-class household from Denton, Texas. Born March 15, 1943, before the family moved to Vallejo, California, in the North Bay of the San Francisco Bay Area, Sylvester was the second of the family's five children. Sylvester was identified as a musical prodigy. By the time he was seven, Sylvester had already become proficient on the keyboards, and by the age of 11, he had mastered the guitar, bass, and drums as well. While still in high school, Sylvester had settled on primarily the guitar and joined a number of high school bands. One of these was the Viscaines, a doo-wop group in which Sylvester and his friend Frank Arino, who was Filipino, were the only non-white members. The Viscaines released a few local singles, including Yellow Moon and Stop What You Are, during the same period. Sylvester also recorded a few solo singles under the name Diane Stewart. With his brother Fred, he formed several short-lived groups, like the Stewart Bros. In the 1960s, Stone worked as a disc jockey for San Francisco, California, soul radio station KSOL, where he included white performers, such as the Beatles and the Rolling Stones, in his playlists. During the same period, he worked as a staff record producer for Autumn Records, producing for predominantly white San Francisco area bands such as the Bo Brummels, the Moho Men, Bobby Freeman, and Grace Slick's first band, The Great Society. Along with James Brown and Parliament Funkadelic, Sly and the Family Stone were pioneers of the 1960s and early 70s funk. Their fusion of R&B rhythms, infectious melodies, and psychedelia created a new pop-soul-rock hybrid, the impact of which has proven lasting and widespread. After a mildly received debut album, A Whole New Thing, Sly and the Family Stone had their first hit single with Dance to the Music, which was later included on an album of the same name. Although their third album, Life, also suffered from low sales, their fourth album, Stand, became a runaway success, selling over 3 million copies and spawning a number one hit single, Everyday People. By the summer of 1969, Sly and the Family Stone were one of the biggest names in music, releasing two more top five singles, Hot Fun in the Summertime and Thank You, Everybody is a Star, before the end of the year and appearing at Woodstock. With the band's newfound fame and success came numerous problems. Relationships within the band were deteriorating. There was friction in particular between the Stone Brothers and Larry Graham. Epic requested more marketable output. After moving to the Los Angeles area in fall 1969, Stone and his bandmates became heavy users of illegal drugs, primarily cocaine and PCP, as the members became increasingly focused on drug use and partying. Thank You reached the top of the Billboard Hot 100 in February 1970. The single also peaked at number 5 on the R&B chart and remained there for five weeks, while also remaining at number one on the pop chart for two weeks in the spring of 1970, before selling over a million copies. Having relocated to Los Angeles with his then-girlfriend Deborah King, later Deborah Santana, Stone's behavior became increasingly erratic. Epic was anticipating new material in 1970, but with none forthcoming, finally released a greatest hits that November. One year later, the band's fifth album, There's a Riot Going On, was released. Stone played most of the parts himself and performed more of the lead vocals than usual. This was the first major label album to feature a drum machine. Live bookings for Sly and the Family Stone had steadily dropped since 1970 because promoters were afraid that Stone or one of the band members might miss the gig, refuse to play, or pass out from drug use. These issues were regular occurrences for the band during the 1970s and had an adverse effect on their ability to demand money for live bookings. In 1970, 26 of 80 concerts were canceled, and numerous others started late. At many of these gigs, Stone walked out before finishing his set. Stone married model actress Kathy Silva on June 5, 1974. They separated in 1976 after their son was mauled by Stone's dog. Silva later told People magazine, quote, I didn't want that world of drugs and weirdness. Still, she remembers, quote, he'd write me a song or promise to change, and I'd try again. We were always fighting, then getting back together. 
Stone went on to record four more albums as a solo artist. In 1976, Stone assembled a new Family Stone and released Heard You Missed Me While I'm Back. 1975's Back on the Right Track followed, and in 1982, Ain't But the One Way was released, which began as a collaborative album with George Clinton, but was scrapped and later completed by producer Stuart Levine for release. None of these later albums achieved much success. Stone also collaborated with Funkadelic on the electric spanking of War Babies, but was unable to reinvigorate his career. In June 1983, Stone was arrested and charged with cocaine possession in Fort Myers, Florida. In 1987, Stone released a single, Ikabu Static Automatic, from the Soul Man soundtrack, and the song, I'm the Burglar, from the Burglar soundtrack. He also co-wrote and co-produced Just Like a Teeter Totter, which appeared on a Bar Keys album from 1989. From 1988 to 1989, Sly Stone wrote and produced a collection of unreleased recordings in his home studio in New Jersey. Coming Back for More and Just Like a Teeter Totter is part of that collection of about 20 songs. In 1990, he gave an energetic vocal performance on the Earth, Wind, and Fire song, Good Time. In 1991, he appeared on a cover of Thank You, performed by the Japanese band 13 Cats, and shared lead vocals with Bobby Womack on When the Weekend Comes, from Womack's 1993 album, I Still Love You. His last major public appearance until 2006 was during the 1993 Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction ceremony, where Stone showed up on stage to be entered into the Hall of Fame, along with the Family Stone. On August 16, 2011, the album I'm Back, Family and Friends was released. The album features re-recorded versions of Sly and the Family Stone's greatest hits with guest appearances from Jeff Beck, Ray Manzarek, Bootsy Collins, Ann Wilson, Carmine Appis, and Johnny Winter, as well as three previously unreleased songs. One month later, on September 25, 2011, the New York Post reported that Sly Stone was now homeless and living out of a white camper van in Los Angeles. Quote, the van is parked on a residential street in Crenshaw, the rough Los Angeles neighborhood where Boys in the Hood was set. A retired couple makes sure he eats once a day and Stone showers at their house. It's a Sly Stone story. It's really harsh. Say no to stimulants. This is what determines you for what you've done before. Memory is a memorable, nostalgic thing. What we have been doing is that we have to face the things. Let's have the most peace of mind. Bring up the bad thoughts to evils. That would be good for the entire community. Sly Stone is 77 years old this year. His health has decreased strongly with addictive substances.